All right, so and in part E, uh, we had to find the particular solution um, to the differential equation with initial condition f of 1 equals 2. Now, on the AP exam, this question, uh, this portion of the differential equation section normally carries the highest amount of points. Normally, six points is a standard procedure. Um, so, if you just know how to solve the differential equations, you should, and you do this accurately, you should, you'll get um, over 60% of the points um, for, for this section, okay? So, keep that in mind. Uh, knowing how to find a particular solution is, is really important. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do it. Um, dy dx uh, is equal to y plus 1 over x square. Um, most the, the all the differential equation problems that I saw in the AP exam are solved by separation of variables. So that's the technique we're going to be using here. So what does separation of variables mean? Uh, this basically means that you have like variables on the same side of the equation. Okay. So let's keep the y's on the left side and the x's on the right side. To accomplish that, I'll have to multiply both sides by dx, dx, that will get rid of this dx on the left side, and then there's y plus 1 up here, so I'll also divide by y plus 1 and y plus 1. It's just like you're solving a typical um, algebraic equation for a specified variable, okay? Okay, so let's see, um, these two cancel out, we have 1 over y plus 1 dy equals 1 over x squared dx, okay? Now, um, let's go ahead and solve this differential equation. To solve it, we have to do the opposite of differentiating, which is integrate. We're going to integrate both sides. So what you have is an um, integration problem where you have two expressions you have to integrate. All right, so uh, we have two problems to integrate. Now, to find the antiderivative of this, you can use a u substitution, but if you take a look at the denominator function, if you uh, call this u, du is simply going to be uh, dy. And then um, to integrate it, it's just going to be the natural logarithm of u, and then you plug this back in, and then you just have the natural logarithm of the denominator, OK? So the antiderivative of this expression is simply the natural logarithm of the absolute value of y plus 1 using u substitution. And then here, I can write this expression as x to the negative 2 dx. Writing it like this makes it easy for me to use the power rule for integrals, OK? So let's go ahead and find the antiderivative of that. So the natural logarithm of the absolute value of y plus 1 is equal to um, x to the negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 over negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. Now, there's something you must not forget, which is that c, that constant, when you're solving indefinite integrals. If you forget the c, um, you're going to lose a lot of points, okay? Right after you forget this c, you just get zeros, zero, zero, zeros, okay? So do not forget this c. It's very, very important, okay? So um, there goes um, the antiderivative of both sides of my equation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to find c, okay? Um, so to, to find out what c is, I'm going to use since uh, we have, since um, f of 1 is equal to 2, this implies that uh, x is 1 and y is 2. I'm going to plug these two values into this equation, and that will help me find the value of c. Okay, so this is the rule of this initial condition. So we're going to have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of 2 plus 1 equals, um, let's see, 1 to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. Okay, so we have the natural logarithm of 2 plus 1 is 3 uh, equals uh, negative 1 plus c. That implies that c is equal to the natural logarithm of 3 minus 1. Actually, I'm sorry, plus 1. You add 1 to both places, so that's what c is, okay? So we're going to put this back into the equation. All right, so um, 
what we're going to do is go ahead and put this C back into this equation that we had right here. Our goal is to isolate Y, okay? So we're going to have um, the natural logarithm of the absolute value of Y plus 1 is equal to, we can bring the X downstairs using the reciprocal property of exponents, negative 1 over X plus the value of C, which is a natural logarithm of 3 plus 1, okay? Now, um, to get y plus 1, this absolute value quantity, the argument of the logarithmic function isolated, we're going to uh, get rid of the ln using its inverse, which is the exponential function. So e to the little ln of y plus 1, absolute value of y plus 1 equals uh, e to the uh, little negative 1 over x, negative 1 over x, plus ln of 3 plus 1. Okay, like that. And on the left side, e and ln cancel each other out, so we have the absolute value of y plus 1 is equal to e to the um, negative 1 over x plus ln 3 plus 1. Okay, now in order for this um, expression here to satisfy f of 1 equals 2, this absolute value quantity must be positive. Okay, this must be positive. If it were negative, then um, um, it, will be, it will be an, an undefined expression. It, it will be an inaccurate expression. Okay, so in order to satisfy this equation, um, since um, f of 1 equals 2 must be defined. Then we have uh, the absolute value, this quantity right here has to be positive or else we have a mismatch with the sign. is equal to y plus 1. So we can drop the absolute value bars. We're going to have y plus 1 equals. Now, um, this e component right here, I can, do, I can use the inverse of the pro, um, product property of exponents to break this down, okay? So if you remember back in algebra, if you have a product of exponents with the same base, so yeah, a to the x times a to the y, can be written as a to the x plus y. We can go in this direction, we can also go in the reverse, okay? So now we have the sum of the exponents, we can write them as the uh, product of exponents with the um, powers as the add-ins that you are summing together, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to group one, negative 1 over x and 1 together because e cannot um, neutralize them, but e to the ln3 can be simplified. So I'm just going to separate that, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two that cannot be simplified, I'll cluster them together, e to the negative 1 over x plus 1, and then e to the ln of 3 I'll keep it by itself because that can be simplified a little bit further, all right? So what is e to the ln3? These are inverse operations. e and ln cancel each other out. So you're, gonna, you're going to have y plus 1 equals 3 e to the negative 1 over x plus 1. To finish this off, you just simply subtract 1 from both sides because the particular solution has to be in the form y equals so if you subtract 1 from both sides, you have y equals uh, 3 e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 minus 1. And that's the particular solution of a differential equation with the initial condition f of 1 is equal to 2. All right, so that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool clips such as this. And also post a comment to let us know what you think about this uh, presentation. More clips can be found on mathcredserve.com calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.